All right, Dave 101 is where I kind of go off on a topic every week. We started it last week. This is episode number two. And tonight I'm getting into experiencers. And I'm going to defend the experiencers a little bit here because as an experiencer myself, there are things that I want to know about what I've experienced. Yet for a number of people out there, we continue to see a lot of really, really angry people. Angry people that want to put down, cut down, slit the throats of those who have had experience. Oh, this goes way beyond skeptic people. This goes way beyond people getting uh, being skeptical about what is truly going on in this world. Look, I am skeptical. You're skeptical. A lot of people out there are skeptical about a lot of these outrageous claims that people, such as myself, make. And you should be. Of course, you sh absolutely should be. But there's a difference between skepticism and the anger that we are seeing in the cryptid world, in the paranormal world, and the supernatural world, of course, in the UFO world as well. Look, the people who have had the experiences, I'm not saying they are all innocent. I am not sitting here uh, waving the flag of, you got to believe every story that is out there because we know that there are liars and charlatans in everything that we do in the world. It doesn't matter whether it's, you know, collecting medical, okay, whether it's collecting uh, government paychecks, whether it's ripping off work, there's always somebody who is dastardly trying to beat the system. There is always somebody out there who wants their 15 minutes of fame and will do it by any means necessary. Also in the UFO world and the cryptid world, we have seen people numerous times who are true experiencers, but aren't ready to step away from the limelight and feel that they need to keep going, they need to keep producing these experiences, that they forge the experiences through certain means, whether it's CGI, whether it's planting evidence, whether it's false scratches on someone's back or arm or leg, whatever it may be. We do see a lot of nasty people in these fields. But the majority of those who are experiencing strange phenomena from gnomes showing up in their garden and knocking on their door to aliens in the bedroom to Bigfoot staring out their windows to <laughs> Bigfoot staring out their windows, staring into windows to anything that is in between, these subjects have scared a lot of people, a lot of people. And the people who have had these experiences, no matter whether it's a one-time affair or something that is continuing on, or somebody who has had multiple experiences with multiple different accounts, we have to take their anecdotal evidence and use it towards finding some answers. We can no longer try and slough them away like a broom sw uh, sweeps dust under a floor mat. Now, there are a lot of people out there in this world who say, we've had enough of the stories. We've had enough of the EVPs on a ghost tour, of shadow people. We have enough with UFO videos and little dots in the sky. We've had enough with these blurry images that people overexpose to try and say, look, that's a Sasquatch or that's a dog, man. No, we're done with that. And to their credit, they are right. But there is this faction of people out there, and we see them every now and again in our chat room, okay, who get so angry. Proof. We need proof. Where is the proof? Where's your photos? That's BS. That is garbage. You are lying. Okay, I went on a show a couple weeks ago where somebody posted that my experiences must be due to mental trauma because I fully admit that I suffer from depression and anxiety. 
This person didn't believe my stories. They don't have to. They don't have to. But they're always looking for an excuse as to why people are making up these stories. Do you think I really wanted an alien in the forest? Was Samantha Moen or Carl the Alien Gray showing up at my window? No, not at all. I didn't want any of this. I lived a perfectly, happily boring life way before Spaced Out Radio, way before the aliens came, way before the UFOs came, way before Bigfoot and my house became haunted. Had a very happily boring life. And I enjoyed it. Much like people who get thrown into their experiences, they had happy lives too. This is not all a bed of roses. It takes a lot of strength for experiencers to come out and say what they have experienced. Yet for those select few who feel that they need to absolutely shout down, name call, berate, and absolutely carve on social media those who are trying to bring their stories out because they finally built up the bravery to do so, you know, screw you. You're hurting people for no reason. You are hurting people who are trying to figure out what it was they saw or experienced. Look, you may be all about the science, because that's the trendy thing to be these days. It's all about the science and government. What do scientists know? What does the government know? What do we know? We need more science. We need more, more proof. Enough stories. And I get that, that a lot of people are frustrated by the stories. But without the stories, you would have nothing to investigate. You would have nowhere new to investigate. We'd see hundreds of thousands of ghost hunters, for instance, running to Waverly Hills, waiting in line, like waiting for a checkout at Walmart, just so they could run through and grab a quick tour with their ghost gear to get some evidence. The people on the internet, whether they are a podcaster, a YouTuber, or just a commenter in a forum or a group on Facebook, can be some of the rudest people out there. And they act like they are the ones who know it all. When nothing in this field has ever been proven. Nobody knows what a Sasquatch is. Nobody knows what a UFO is. Nobody knows what an alien is. Nobody knows what a ghost is or a shadow person. Or, like Barla Ventura said earlier, nobody knows what a gnome is or a puka or a changeling or a sea hag. We do not know. What we do know is there is some crazy awesome mysteries that are running around our planet that some of us have had the privilege of experiencing. And those experiences have led us to a million and one questions that float through our brains on a daily basis. For those who have had multiple experiences, they are literally, literally right there. And they are trying to figure it out for themselves because they don't probably have a lot of people to answer to. So like anyone's problem, a lot of us reach out to the internet. And we reach out on social media. Have you had this happen to you? Have you seen this? What do you make of that? But we are so crass and so arrogant and egotistical that many of the people in this field feel they just got to cut people down. I think this is the reason why we do not have a lot of quality evidence coming forward. I bet you that smoking gun patterson giblin Phil a.k.a. 2021, not 1967, is out there somewhere. But if I were those people who filmed that that film, knowing the rhetoric and the chaos it would cause on social media, there is no way in hell I would ever release it. Look, we want to prove these, but do we really want to prove the existence of these creatures? Do we really want UFO disclosure? No, because it ends an argument for many people. If we find out that Bigfoot is captured, 
goes into a government jail where he disappears. Are we going to believe that? And I mean disappears like banishes, like a Star Trek type thing. All right, are we going to believe that? No. We don't want the arguments to end. We need this drama. And there are a number of people who feed off of this drama. The drama is causing a lot of heartache, a lot of heartbreak, and a lot of sad people. I've seen it with my own eyes. People who don't want to talk about their experiences anymore because they were in a Facebook group or they were on a YouTube show and they got absolutely trounced because nobody wanted to believe them. It's okay not to believe. What's not okay is tearing someone down because you don't believe them. That's where things get into trouble. That's where the chaos ensues. And that's where the drama begins when it never really had to. So in closing, don't get mad at the experiences or if you hear someone on this show and you don't believe them for a second, Hell, if, even if you don't believe me, don't get mad. There's no reason to get mad, okay? There's no reason to call someone a liar because the last time I checked, for the amount of criticism I've taken for literally having my encounter in the forest with an extraterrestrial with Samantha Mowat, the last time I checked, it was just her and I in there, in that forest with those beings. I didn't see any of the Facebook critics, the Twitter critics, the YouTube critics in that forest with me. Until you've stepped in that person's shoes and seen what they have seen, leave your BS behind, leave your opinion behind. Once again, you don't have to believe, but you don't have to be a jerk about it either. And that's the point. If we want to work together in this field to clean it up, we need a lot of people to stop being jerks. That is your Dave 101 for this week, and we will talk to you next week on the 101. Let's get to the news.